wrestling fans, WGBB's Pro Wrestling Spotlight Radio Show presents a weekend of champions. Meet the greatest wrestling champions of all time live. See seven-time NWA champion Ric Flair Saturday and Sunday. Living legend Bruno San Martino. Superstar Billy Graham. Nature Boy Buddy Rogers. Rick Rude. Wrestling sexiest woman and many others. Over 50 wrestling memorabilia tables. Saturday and Sunday, August 24th and 25th. Ramada Hotel, LaGuardia Airport, Grand Central Parkway, Queens. Doors open 12 noon each day. Record run, is that on? Oh, okay, no problem. Okay. All right, we're okay. Here you go. Great. Oh, Jimmy. Say hello to John. John, Frank of To John Arezzi? Yeah, that one. His sister. I'd like to say, John, if you expect me to do this video, you need to pay me more money. This wasn't in my original contract. I'm going to have my attorney sue you. I'm going to call my law firm Trickle Down and Drip. Now, wait a minute. Isn't that one of those deals where they put your head on somebody else's body? <laughs> <laughs>
But people want to see athletics all the time because they don't know what's going to happen and they don't know who's going to win and they enjoy that. Yeah. Whether it's violence or whatever. <laughs> Was you didn't uh, spell out for him clear enough. I mean, you said that and everyone in this room understood, but he probably didn't even know what you meant. No, he had no. Well, he's, he's still working on uh, being able to hit the ground with his hat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think everybody wants to know is Jim uh, John or Rizzi good at neutral system or not. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know I do. Uh, 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 I was going to say about Andre the Giant. Oh. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Myself, I, uh, you know, funny you should ask, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up here in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, of course, but I don't know why I'm talking to this mic right here, God, I can't care. <laughs> it's a great hall, it? it's like marriages sometimes, I'll tell you. Very hollow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you a truck driver, it's real, it's goddamn risky. <laughs> but uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh, my biggest idol was Buddy Rogers, you know. When I was a young guy growing up, and uh, I'm not going way back now, I'm just going back a little bit. <laughs> Buddy Rogers was my idol, that's the guy I like. <laughs> yeah, guys like him and Johnny Valentine come on the Super Bowl, I was right there every Saturday night. What I'm getting at is uh, you'd be surprised. It takes somebody sometimes to plant a seed. Whether it's education or law enforcement or politics or whatever or life, it takes somebody to inspire you. And uh, I know goddamn well when I was a young ass wrestler down there wrestling in Tampa, there was a guy out there twanging a guitar in the front row. It was Hulk Hogan. And he's come up to me so many times and said, "You and Jimmy Valiant was the guy that inspired me." So you see, things are it just keeps going on and going on, kind of a snowball type effect. But. Whether it's good guys or bad, or whether you believe in it or not, I'll tell you one thing, it's entertainment. Because reality is entertainment. You, know, you may have the, the uh, Veloci papers, you may have Watergate, you may have um, the coup, uh, most recently uh, in Moscow. It's entertainment. <laughs> whatever holds your, whatever holds your uh, focus at the moment. <laughs> Right, C-O-U-P, I don't know why the hell, why that's that, it's a Jap ass guy. Guy in the back, that Jap, he's laughing his ass off. You know what that means, coup, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not first Evo coup either, is it? <laughs> really, the bottom, the bottom line I'm trying to leave you all here is uh, the simple fact is that um, I'm certain men in this room have left a definite impression in professional wrestling. I may be like a goddamn pimple on a goddamn elephant's ass. You only know, walk past you, you never even seen it, but it's just there, you know. I, uh, fortunate enough to uh, have been on uh, the TV and maybe a couple parts, a couple of WrestleMania shows, just as a manager, just as a manager. But there's quite a few people in this room and throughout New York and maybe LA and Texas and Japan, Maui or whatever. They kind of know that Johnny Valiant and Jimmy Valiant and Johnny V and Beefcake and Dino Bravo and Rail Down the Line was kind of a part of their, their living room at one time or not. It's just so funny how you change the baton of time on the American bandstand. It's just amazing. Sports with Mickey Mantle and Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth and Don Mattingly's haircut. That's just how things happen in life. <laughs> Goddamn truth. Talk about a guy getting tired for $25 million from where I'm from in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Danny Marino. Got an IQ of a flying ant, a guy inside an ant. $25 million to play pro football for, 20, you know, for five years. Strange, strange world out there. But I think the common neighbor, same thing, man. They all want to go make uh, the best of themselves. They have a common focus out there. They're dedicated, they gave their life. And I'll tell you what, uh, yeah, it's just a pleasure being with guys like Buddy Rogers, Lou Fez, Billy Graham, Mr. Sharp, too. It's nice like being with you all. Of course, Bruno will join people here. He's from my hometown, Pittsburgh, PA. 
you can turn up an idle mind too those days. And uh, in summation, Mr. Coronet too, <laughs> and Rick Flair, I really don't want to forget, really forget anybody. With this uh, combined effort to what you really see on TV and hotels or airports or whatever, in arenas, it's our pleasure to always show up and give you what you want. So what I want everyone to keep in mind, and Buddy and I started a professional wrestling school together called Champion's Choice, which we changed to Buddy Rogers uh, School of uh, Professional Wrestling, which later got changed to the Monster Factory. It says, the sign on the marquee says professional wrestling. And Dennis Carluzzo, my partner, when we... When we're done at the end of the night, what we do is we ask people on the way out the door one thing. Did you get your money's worth? Because that's what's important to us. It's not the violence. What we want people to see is professional wrestling, and we want a man to walk out of there with his little girl and his little boy and his wife and everyone to say, we had a hell of a time, and it didn't cost as much as it did to go to the carnival or go to the circus, and we had a good time. And I think that if uh, wrestling would get away, I mean, the WWF inside, like when you leave a Disney movie, then we've created what we wanted to create, and that's to send the wrestling fan home happy. <laughs> Don't read it or don't listen to it. You don't watch it. But uh, 
uh, it, it definitely uh, has a major effect. It's uh, it's affecting Vince McMahon. Uh, the, the big keys in this whole this whole ball game is affecting that person himself. John Arruzzi, this man Dave Meltzer here, uh, and their colleagues are affecting Vince McMahon in the World Wrestling Federation and the WWE. So uh, take your leave. It's, it's here to stay. It's really just about the best I can do. You know. Well, many years ago, prior to the sophisticated newsletter that Dave has, uh, each territory or each major city would print their own program, whether it was weekly or monthly, whenever they had a major show coming up. And they had sort of an amateurish newsletter. But it was focused, of course, on their own little territory, their own little ball game. But with the broad scope that Dave is covering with his newsletter, it's really been a boom in the wrestling business. He's been able to uh, get the information from throughout the world. We get all the information from everywhere. And we keep a pretty good pulse on wrestling. And I'm involved in the wrestling game, and I've been for a number of years. But if it weren't for Dave's newsletter to keep me up with it, I would lose a lot of the information that he has in there. Local productions, local uh, programs and letters uh, couldn't get the job done. And I think we should all be very thankful to have something like that. Thank you. anybody else. I've, I've heard a lot of this man get a lot of heat about his newsletter. And I've never been one to back down and like you know hide the shadow when Dave Meltzer's name is mentioned. Because guys are very helpful to me. I consider him a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends. His newsletter uh, gives a lot of information which are helpful to promoters. He lets you know who's who's available, who's leaving who, who's going there. And if you, have a, if you have a question about the business, he's more than willing to answer it for you, and I, I respect his knowledge and accept his knowledge. Absolutely, he's a good guy, and you know, I, gave a, I think he was that great. Jim? Let me, well, I'm going to stand there. <laughs> I think, personally, I think, and to be honest with you, it would be better if the business was not exposed like it is today. I think people, more people would still be coming to the matches. Because we've got to realize, and I'm including myself among this, that most people don't get into wrestling the art form that we see that it is. They just want to know, is it real or is it fake or whatever? Ah, shit, we don't care. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the majority of people across the country. If people still believe, they would still be coming back to the arenas time after time after time until they saw the guy win that they wanted to see win. However, that ain't going to happen anymore. But a lot of people sit there and blame Dave Meltzer and blame newsletters. He is sending this thing out to maybe 5,000 people across the country, maybe not that many, that are going to go to the matches anyway because they're interested. Jim Hurd and Vince McMahon and all these other dumb shits put it in the front page of the New York Times and it gets dropped down in 100 million daggum doorsteps of people that don't give a shit. I always knew it was. I ain't ever going to see that shit. So instead of blaming Dave and blaming a few people who are going to send out stuff to all you guys who are obviously going to come anyway, we should blame the stupid people running TBS and, and Vince McMahon, it, it, to me, in my opinion, made a stupid mistake, put it all over the newspapers, because they brought the message that this was all a show, as he termed it, to people who really didn't give a shit about wrestling in the first place, and that's just going to cement the fact they're never going to go. So if we're going to blame somebody, let's blame the people that did it the worst and exposed it the most, and that's the day of guys running the thing in the first place. <laughs> Let's do opposite of what he says he's going to do, and, screw, and, and he wound up screwing everything up. But like Jimmy said, five thousand, you know, five thousand people read the thing. That, you know, but they put a lot of blame on him for uh, exposing the business and, and wrecking it. And he, he goes to the front. Of the they put the blame on him because he exposes the way that they screw things up. <laughs> I mean, you got a guy going in front of the state senate of New Jersey sends his wife off to tell everybody pro wrestling is fixed, it's an entertainment, uh, you know. And, on him when he tells 5,000 people, you know, 
There is one positive thing that came out of that, though. Over the years that I've been in the business, the first question that a person from the media would ask me 10 years ago is, is it fake? Nobody in the last three to four years has asked me if wrestling's fake because nobody cares. What they care about is the quality of the show, the attendance, how much the marketing is there, what kind of money is need, being made by the promotion. That's why the Wall Street Journal has done stories on the Monster Factory, the New York Post, the New York Times, the Philadelphia Inquirer. What they want to know is, they want to know about the industry itself. Unfortunately, it was taken from people that had the, the, the technique and the quality, like Buddy, like Lou, like Strangler Lewis, and like all the people that when they left, they, I can remember being a kid watching Buddy Rogers and Bobo Bazzo two out of three balls and then the third ball when Buddy lucked out. And I was a Buddy Rogers fan going, oh my God, I don't know how he's going to beat him next week. i got to get my dad to take me back there to find out. <laughs> you know, well, I'm working my way back out here. Let me just tell you guys one second. <laughs> you talk about the land of opportunity. I'm just poor old Tom Solomon from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the wrestler for John L. Solomon, I'll tell you pretty much Johnny Diet. If I could be here in a room like uh, with Buddy Rogers and Lou Penn, there's got to be hope for y'all out there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just say this in summation, just on my part, real quick. And, uh, you know, you know, I uh, I flew with a guy one time. Uh, I started talking to this guy. was very well attired, obviously. He doesn't have a real big name. In fact, I don't even know his name, but uh, he told me a long time ago he was a big ass with the, uh, with the circus. He said, you know what? Half the battle in life is this is your appearance. <coughs> yeah? Your appearance. What you look like? I said, what's the other half? He says, it's what the people think you are. In other words, if you keep that in mind in your life, as you go about your life, and I'm probably talking to myself right now out loud, I go through my life, 50% is what I look like, and the other 50% is what people think I'm like. It hits home with all politics, your dentist, your attorney, your lawyer, your wife, your, your boyfriend, or your boss, or whatever. That's what people perceive you as. It's what people really, they look at you, what do they see? Well, even professional wrestling is a very case in point. It hits home with all of us. What do you look like? Guy with the big arms and a guy with a, a big hand face or this <laughs> sinister looking guy or whatever. Man, he's packing a wallet. Mm. Well, maybe he is. Now, let me just say this, that I think one of the greatest things that gives us a, a chance to voice an opinion accordingly. And that's what separates us from places like Russia or whatever where they can't really do only until the last couple of days, with this coup, with this paratroika, really, it's true, so we can voice ourselves. We can church channel from here, channel two, or channel four, to 53, or cable, or whatever, and we can be ourselves. If you like professional wrestling, fine. You can watch Ted Turner, you can watch Vince McMahon, you can watch some of the other independents, or you can just go in and rent a, a video of Misery or whatever. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. That gives us a choice, because Unlike animals, we do have an option. And I'll tell you what, I, uh, I'm just very proud to be here with these champions right here to my immediate left. And I thank John Rizzi for having the time and consideration to invite uh, yours truly right here. And I'll tell you what, I, uh, I'm very anxious to look forward to it tomorrow. I'm very proud of myself being here today with the likes of a Mae Young or the fabulous Mula and just right on down the line. No matter who they are out there. Oh, and whatever your eyes. Oh, I never saw them on TV that much. I never saw this that. Let me tell you something right now. There's not a there's not a town in the United States of America that these fellas have not appeared in. Well many years before a lot of you folks out there were even born. That they didn't have the advantage of NBC TV. They didn't have the advantage of VCRs. They did not have the advantage of uh, recording these matches and um, recording them again, and selling them, and redistribution. I remember when I was a young kid in eighth grade, and uh, 
in Pittsburgh growing up, you saw a picture of Buddy Rogers or a Johnny Valentine in the magazine, and man, that was it. That was it. I mean, that was just all you had to focus upon because it was the only show in town. And it goes to show how great these guys are, or allude to my media <coughs> life. That's why you saw a guy like Billy Graham emerge. That's why you saw guys like Paul Kogan later on, 20 years ago, emerge. There are no better, there are no worse. These fellas here, to my immediate left, are exactly, you're looking right here, and I think we should just give them a big time in that profession. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a funny thing. They say money changes people, and uh, I can probably chime in here a little bit here and there, some of the people I met. But you have to remember the grassroots of life is uh, the fans. I love baseball, I love different sports. I started out as a fan. You people obviously are fans, you're right here. Uh, in summation, really, what I really want to say is the fact that uh, it's my pleasure to be here with these gifted athletes, young and old, and thanking John Arizzi and for the opportunity here. Y'all take care of it for you to see tomorrow night. people in Minneapolis. There were 10,000 people in Atlanta. Reunion Arena was sold out. They had a card in Memphis. They had a card in Continental. They had a card in Florida. That, and there were everybody had made the effort to leave their home, go out, buy a ticket, park their car, and pay to see wrestling. And there wasn't a cartoon bunch of bullshit in the bunch of it except your normal wrestling angles, which everybody enjoyed because they liked seeing it. But it wasn't making everybody look like a bunch of clowns. And if you go 20 years farther back, then Buddy Rogers and Lou Thez were selling out St. Louis, like we've said already 15 times, but they daggum did it, okay? And everybody else in the business at that time was drawing big crowds. Nobody in the history of professional wrestling, the live crowds have never been as low as they are today. Am I right or am I wrong? What you're Across the country. What I'm saying is Vince McMahon's got the only show in town and people are going to see that stuff just because they like that. But the people who want to go and see wrestling matches ain't got nowhere to go, so they're staying goddamn home. Very small percentage. Very small percentage. There was 100,000 people at wrestling matches 10 years ago. Now there's 5,000 in one night and shit on the rest. Now, and I think oh possibly uh, you're agreeing with me now. Gonna have to be <laughs> about what it is right now. But in 1963, if I, if Buddy can correct me if I'm wrong, in Kaminsky Park there was what 63,000 people. <laughs> what I'm saying is that Vince has the only show that anybody can go to see because nobody else is doing wrestling. The WWF is always going to draw and always going to make money, and people are always going to want to watch it. But there's a lot of other people that want to see other stuff. That just don't have anywhere to go. Jimmy, That's the point. Jimmy, you do you feel that overexposure on TV is doing it too? Sure, overexposure of this kind. I wouldn't want to see my mother if she was on TV doing the shit that they're doing. <laughs> you know, Joel, Dennis, some independents, and there's nothing else. And in Memphis, they're still doing a little bit, but they ain't got no talent. Here's what I'm saying. I'm gonna say one more thing. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna let everybody else talk because I'll just get carried away. And then we're gonna box it if, out. Yes. <laughs> if, if, for example, you go to see a magician. You've heard this one. You go to see a magician, and he makes a battleship disappear and you believe that he made that battleship disappear, then you're gonna go every single time because it's the daggumest thing you've ever seen in your life. Now, if, if you think there's a trick to this, but I don't know what it is, then you're gonna go see that guy make that battleship disappear every single time you can until you figure it out. <coughs> but if somebody comes up to you and he said, okay, they slide the mirror up here, the smoke comes out, this is how he does it, the whole thing, you're gonna go back one more time you're going to say, yep, that's how he does it. And then you're going to wait for him to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. Something bigger and better. That's what they've done now. Nobody believes what's going on, so they go to see one match, and then they wait for something bigger and better. And if it takes a year, that's how long it is before they come back. And that's the whole problem. They don't come anymore to see people win and lose and to see something they can believe in. They come to see a daggum show just like they go to see a John. And, and I'll tell you something else about John Wayne movies. People go, well, all the Indians John Wayne shot weren't really dead. Well, yeah, but they didn't get up while John was riding off in the sunset and patting each other on the back. <laughs> they exposed the shit on their own program. That's what I'm saying. Good night. <laughs>
Goldberg is in What do you think? John, 
Because I noticed that the same woman who offered uh, the handsome stranger, wait a minute now, the same woman, the same woman who offered the handsome stranger in the Global Wrestling Federation $100,000 for his mask, offered 50 grand for this set. But I said, no, I'm saving it for my wedding night. So, but we're going to start out with what? Um, hey, it wasn't my idea, that's what they said. But anyway, what, $75 is it? That John says $75 is the fair market value for this stuff, and that's what we're going to start out at. Now, I don't know how in the world we're going to be able to see whether anybody's going to bid what. Okay, uh, Tony, if you just look around, if someone, raise your hand if you want to bid on the item. Also, rules of the auction, uh, it's cash and carry, and we will accept a personal check. However, you won't get the item until the check clears. <laughs> The cornet, racket, and tie. No, Any no, bitch, raise your hand. Why don't we just uh, why don't we just open it up then and see what we get for it? Yeah. Uh, will anybody bid if I promise before I give you the racket to hit John with it? Yeah. Right. Okay, start raising your hand. Okay, what do we have? Any any bids at all? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Twenty. You can still play with it, for Christ's sake. Twenty dollars. We got twenty. We got twenty on the floor. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. We got thirty. We got thirty-five. Forty dollars. We got forty right here. Forty dollars. Anyone want to go forty-five? Forty-five. 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 Forty-five dollars right here. Anyone want to go for fifty dollars? Fifty dollars. Fifty. 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 Fifty dollars right here. Fifty dollars. We got fifty anymore. Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars, sixty dollars. Okay, we got fifty. Sixty dollars right here. Sixty dollars. Okay, we're gonna go to seventy. Seventy dollars. Seventy. Seventy. Sixty-five dollars. Oh, why not just take sixty-two fifty? Sixty-two fifty. Okay, we're going to seventy. Anyone go to seventy? Seventy dollars right here. Seventy dollars. Seventy-five. 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 Seventy-five dollars, right here. Eighty, eighty, eighty. Oh! Yeah! Yeah! That worth an extra five. Uh, uh, hundred for the doctor. <laughs> well, that woke me up at least. We got rid of my hangover, goddammit. All right, uh, we got eighty dollars. Eighty dollars, right here. Eighty dollars. Eighty. Eighty. Ninety. Eighty going once. Eighty going twice. Sold. Eighty dollars. Yeah. Okay. Off to a good start. by Lou Fez, a pair of authentic ring-worn Lou Fez trunks. They have been washed, I guess. I'm not going to check them out for you. Okay, what do we bid for this? We got a minimum bid. Minimum bid of... Wait a minute. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I'm just inspecting this stuff here. Wait a minute. Brian, real quick, see if he's been washed. <laughs> Never. Never. That, that's even extra. It's worth more because they are, they are authentically not washed. These things are genuine, brother, because I haven't seen material like this in 40 years. <laughs> Where's Lou? <laughs> just kidding, Jeff. He's liable to take my leg off. Okay, wait a minute. It's even, it's even. Oh, thanks a lot. It, it's even, it says, uh, wait a minute, 100% fiber acrylic, whatever that may be, and uh, it's got a nice tag in here and everything. It's got a drawstring. You too can wrestle like a champion in these, okay? Where were we at here? Did anybody bid yet? 
One dollar. Oh, a dollar. Ten dollars fifty. Hey, have you got homework to do? No. <laughs> He's a forty-year-old midget anyway. I've about said that from the start. What are we starting out at then, John? Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars. Okay, you didn't get the racket, so you're going for the next best thing. Okay, twenty-five. And we got it into 30. Come on, come on, guys. Loot men's is drunk, for heaven's sake. <laughs> what? And never, never been washed. Put them on and they'll be more. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ, brother. 
Blue Bears won this in Mexico in the 1940s, and it weighs about 175 pounds only through the virtue of my superhuman strength. Am I able to curl this thing? And both trophies, both trophies, $75. Who's going to start out? Oh, he wants a picture, but he won't bid. Bid first, then take a picture. Okay, well, now you're going to take a picture. Okay, take a picture anyway. $75. Anybody? $75 from the man from Iowa. He's not going to go away defeated. $75. Then we got 80 anywhere. Both these trophies for one low, low price. Kids, this is entertainment. Come on now. $75. Have we got, have we got anybody to challenge the guys from Iowa? Do we have anybody that wishes the guys from Iowa would go away? Yeah! <laughs> and they're going, but they're going to take these trophies with them. Huh? $80? $80? I like this man. He's got more money than he's got brains. I like a guy like that. $80. Okay, now, Mr. Iowa, do we have $85? $85. $85. Okay, what do you got to say? $100! Oh! Party on, Garth. Okay, $100. $100. Come on, Mr. Iowa. Oh, now, come on now. You can't let him get away with this. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm going to wait for a minute because he's taking in some money. Maybe he'll be able to go more. What do you think, guys? We got $100 over here. No. Oh, man. You are a loose ass fanatic, brother. $100. Okay, we got $100. Come on. Anybody else? Anybody? $100. What do you think, John? Should we let him? He's going to have everything that Lou says ever owned here in a minute. A hundred dollars once, twice, a hundred dollars. Here we go. We've got four of Lou's ex-wives coming in later on. <laughs> this right here is, is something that the superstar Billy Graham has donated. And this, I kind of like, I'd almost want to bid on this, but I'm disqualified because I'm an employee. It's a picture of superstar Billy Graham and Hulk Hogan, and I think it's at the Slammies because they've got an award and they're in Texas. It's personally inscribed from Hulk Hogan. But wait, but wait. Oh, Cactus, Cactus Jack even perked up on this one. The inscription says to superstar, only you and I know the real reason why. Your friend Hulk Hogan. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think that this is as close as Hulk Hogan will ever come to admitting plagiarism with superstar Billy Graham's rap, okay? That's what my opinion is to superstar. Only you and I know the real reason why your friend the Hulkster, both of them at the Slammies, personally donated by superstar Billy Graham. And just speaking to Billy, and Billy is not alluding to anything, but uh, he said that this is going to be a big news story someday, and that's all he would allude to. And uh, uh, we even had pictures of this taken for the media. Uh, it's uh, it's really a one of a kind item, considering everything that's been going on in the business this year. Uh, that is certainly uh, it's going to one of a kind. You guys, uh, whoever bids on this is going to have something that will increase in value dramatically soon. We're going to start the bidding off at $100 for this. Come on, we're going to start the bidding off at $100. If Hulk was here, he might go $200. What do you think? $100, anybody? This is where you pay attention back there. We got $100 over here. The man's standing here unchallenged. Come on, don't at least don't let him get away without a fight, even if you don't want it. That's un-American. $100 we've got for this picture right here. Anybody yell out? One ten. One ten. We got one ten from. I like the way this man talks. What do you think? No, oh, come on. Okay, we got one ten. Do what? Oh, he's trying to coax him. Yeah, go ahead. Get down here a little closer where you talk to him good. $110. Everybody back there, what do you think, Cactus? You want this? $110. No, no, no. 
Oh, you got a bid. Oh, okay. A hundred and ten dollars. Anybody else? What do you think? Okay. A hundred and ten. Everybody think quick. Going once. Going twice. One twenty. Oh! Booker, you were going for a real hot finish there, weren't you? Huh? $120. What do you say? $125. $125. $125. What do you, oh, come on. Look at this close now. I'm going to rub it in his face here. Willie will probably sign anything you want. $130. $135. I'm just going to get over here right in the middle of this here. Okay, $135. What do you think, guys? Come on, settle it amongst yourselves. 140. 140. 140. 150. Oh, come on. 200. He's going to sign it. He'll even put his footprint on it. 150. 150. Is there anybody else that wants a big ball finish here now that's waiting? 150 going once. 150 going twice. 151. <laughs>
that quick. You know, you always said you delivered. But you're giving up. Oh. You're giving. No, you got to do it in $5 spots. $60 from Joe Goodhart. But come on now, Monster Factory. There's more of you than there is of him. What now? From Dennis Coral, it is $70. $70. $70. Oh, come on, Goodhart. Hey, if you if you start a trend now, they may kick your ass on September 21st. If you, if you start letting them win one now, come on. <laughs> $70 from the Monster Factory. Anybody else? $70 what? $70 twice? Huh? I don't hear anything. Well, it might it might fit Larry if we slid it up the back. $70. Okay. You got it. I'll give them a round of applause just because they beat Goodhart. Yeah! Yeah!
because they're, they're afraid of what's going to... i tell you what, all the women leave the room and we'll see what happens. $50 from Dr. Mike Lano. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to have to do it. What? I love this man. What, did you just rob a bank on the way over here? $55. What do you think? $60. $65. Now it's gone. What do you think, Mike? He's taking pictures. $70. $70. $75. And remember, $80. Huh? $80. $85. Remember, this comes with a kiss on the cheek. Maybe more after we get past $150. $85. $85. Now, Dr. Mike. John, do we take credit cards? <laughs> Wait, from you? From you? Hey, let me tell you something. The Bank of Manhattan wouldn't take a credit card from you. Uh, you, you. You want to? You want to? Wait a minute, John. We need, we need, we need advice here. Do we take credit cards? <laughs> no credit cards. No credit cards, Doctor Mike. But Dave's right over here. He'll loan you some money. Wait a minute, Wade Keller, stand up. Stand up. Now turn around front ways where I can see you. Okay, this guy when he gets sunburned, he looks like a thermometer. 
Santa now. Dr. Mike Lano says he'll up his bid if you'll put his column back in a torch. What do you say? A thousand dollars a month? I can get an ad in the New York Times for less than that. Come on. Help us out here. No, okay. What do you think? Eighty-five dollars, he's gonna get it. Eighty-five dollars going once. Eighty-five going twice. You got it, $85. Yeah. Mr. Fez, right here. You, now, you, you know what? You have, you have covered the whole spectrum. You've got Lou says his trunks, Lou says his trophies, and you've got woman's bustier to wear around the house while you're looking at them. <laughs> singly? Okay, we're going to do them singly. It's a book set from Japan. The greatest wrestler of all time, Lou Fez. And these things are dynamite. As a matter of fact, hold on here a second. My correction, we got two volume twos. Volume one is out of print. You can't get it any place. Even Lou Fez can't get it. That pretty well means you can't get it. So volume two, and Mr. Referee, or Mr. Auction Assistant, or whatever the heck you are, go and, go and flip through this a little bit and let everybody see because there's some dynamite pictures here. There's reproductions of old programs down through Lou's career. There's personal pictures. It's, they're both autographed by Lou Fez. These were printed in Japan and probably only available there, as far as I know, except from Lou. Um, no, but we will give... Uh, well, Lano, here, Lano speaks Japanese, so he can translate it all for you. 35. But since you said 40, we'll take it. But in the future, okay, $40 from the 40-year-old midget. $40 from the midget. Who's going to say 45? These things are dynamite. And volume two pretty soon is going to be just like volume one. It ain't going to be around. Anybody got 45? $45. Show him a little more of that. Get him used to it. Anybody say 50? $50. Where, where's Matt? Hey, Dave. Mr. Japan. $50. Oh, you got one. Oh, I figured you did. Okay. $50. We got $45. Do we hear $50? Anybody? $50? Show them the autograph. It's in there. Show them this. Well, let's see. Let's look at this thing for a second here. All kind of old action pictures. Donnie O'Jonathan's in there. All sorts of good stuff. All the way from the start of his career. We got $45. Anybody going to say $50? Oh, we're standing around now. Come on. He's already got his wallet out. $45 going once. $45 going twice. $45. Forty dollars? I didn't. I wasn't looking at you. Forty dollars. This is the last one. There ain't gonna be no more. Anybody got? Huh? What? Yes. I'm gonna take it all and leave before anybody realizes I'm gone. Forty dollars. Come on, anybody. We got thirty-five over here. Anybody want it for forty? You want, a, you want a gift set? It yeah, makes excellent Christmas present. Huh? Uh, will you bid 40 if I give you the interview? Yeah! Oh, well, heck then. Come on now. I'm going to have to give it to him. 40. Who said? Oh, my God. I'm going to shake your hand in a minute. $40. What do you think? Oh, come on. 10 more bucks. What is that? Look, you're standing, you're standing next to Moolah. She knows that, hey, money's not everything. It's the only thing. Okay. So come up with 10 more bucks you've been before you can have it. We got, yeah, give me some more slack. Okay, we got 40 of them. Huh? 40? You're saying it or he's saying it? Okay, there you go. $45. Now, take a look. Wait a minute. Come here. Flip through this. Don't go too far. You know what it looks like? Okay. What do you think? Going to say 50? It's worth it. You've got the trophies already. What you need is this to explain why you want them. <laughs> okay, he said $45. Anybody else? It's going once. Twice. Fork over his, 
Poor Joe Bruce got to hog it all up for you. Uh, he's back. He's got more. He went to the ATM. Okay, we got a $70 bid. Are you going to go 75 These things cost 200 bucks brand new. Jesus Christ. If we had a wrestler at, wait a minute, what? Cactus, what size boots you wear? A hundred dollars from Cactus Jack. One ten, one ten, Cactus. A hundred ten dollars, but hey, it's gonna cost you two hundred bucks for a new pair, and you buy one once every five years or so. What is it, a hundred fifteen? Hundred fifteen dollars from Cactus Jack. One twenty-five. From Amarillo Slim over here. Huh? 130 from Cactus Jack. Hey, I'm telling you, these things cost over 200 bucks just to have them made brand new, man. And these were worn by superstar Billy Graham. Okay, yeah, electric's gonna walk with it in front of it. Well, he ain't. Do it, do it again. He, he didn't see it the first time. He's the cactus. Cactus said 130. Oh, 140. 140, cactus. 150, and he's not even next to her. 150. 175. Cactus, come on, you'll do anything. That's been proven many times. if you want to. <laughs> Come on, he said 175. Ops, what size boots you wear? 15? I'm sure these are 15. <laughs> what do you think, Ops? Come on. We're getting out in the narrow territory now, people in size 15 shoe. 175 he's got. Anybody else going to do anything about it? Cactus. Ah, okay. Anybody else? 175 going once. Uh oh. 180. He came through. Electric's coming over. I need to go. $200. $200 and she didn't even pull it down but half an inch. Come over here. Hey, family entertainment, right, Paul? What about this side?
start this thing out? What can you say? This is a piece of history. And it's, and it's entertaining as heck just watching it walk around. $500. Did anybody go start it out? Oh, come on, good heart. You haven't made any noise in a while. Think what this would look like hanging up in front of the Tri-State Wrestling Office, huh? What, think of what it would look like in the, in the radio at WIP. Superstar Billy Graham, a Philadelphia institution, much like the one that your father served some time in. Come on, Joe, we'll do something about it. Uh, see, when, when, they, when these promoters get rich and famous, then they get stuff. Now, what about, what, where'd the Monster Factory go? Come on, this, this should be in a Hall of Fame somewhere. All the Monster, fa monster Factory leaders have, have gone out to lunch. Huh? Anybody? You're reaching in your pocket. Are you just pulling your pants up? Okay. It does match the boots. It does match the boots. It does match the five hundred dollars. Sunglasses and everything. Electra, Electra will personally present it to you again. Well, it depends on how you present things. I'm not gonna put that one on the microphone, but we got a heck of a deal going on here. Yet, but we'll, we know we've got 400. Is that is that included with the bargain? I'd like to know. Oh, okay. Electra's deal, you have to go 500. But I'll be well, I'll be willing to go 25 with you to stand next to you. No, not not to you. No. Come on, I'll tip in 25 of that 500 if I just look over your shoulder. I'm kicking in 25, so we got 500 dollars. Now I don't know, I don't know whether we should let the whole room in on this deal or not. But believe me, it'd be worth it. Okay, we got one more thing to do. Okay, this, ladies and gentlemen, and let's just for the heck of it because he's the champ and he's the greatest, let's give him a hand, Rick Flair. Right. I don't know whether Electra can carry this thing around or not because it weighs about 50 pounds, but we'll see if she can flex her pecs. You got it? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the Nature Boys robes. Get this boy out here, Jack. As they just about all are. <laughs> An inflatable beach ball from Wet n' Wild. Yeah. Am I fit? It. One dollar. One dollar. How about five dollars go up and slap him for throwing it in? <laughs> okay, we'll hold on to this for a second. I'll register that bid. A thousand dollars for the Nature Boys robe. Come on, and this is this is what everybody's been talking about all this time now. Come on. Somebody, somebody, somebody should take a buck a buck. Just come in here for a minute. Yeah!
situation like this, maybe even five years ago, but I think through the understanding and the respect that uh, we have come to have for each other, me being a wrestler and you being you being a fan, it's uh, it's opened a new a new avenue for me and it's enlightened me as to just how many people there are in the world that really, really love and respect the sport of professional wrestling. And, uh, uh, and I'm real serious when I say that. I didn't think I'd ever find myself in a situation like this. And it wasn't because I didn't respect you, I didn't respect your opinions. It was just because I felt that our sport, and it is a sport, uh, deser deserved the maximum amount of protection. And uh, uh, I still feel that way. But after spending the weekend with you here and being around some of the people whose names I don't have to mention, that I've come to respect also. Uh, let me just say I've had a great time and I look forward to seeing you all in the future and as far as Ric Flair's future, uh, I'll be a World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to take John with me and, and uh, a story that a lot of you don't know is I threw John out of the Philadelphia Civic Center a couple of years ago because not literally, not threw him out of the building, but I was I was so stressed out over the fact that there were so many people backstage, and I felt like we were losing our identity. And uh, there again, here we are. We've become good friends. I have a lot of respect for John, and thanks for having me. I've had a great time. Thank you. On behalf of that robe, some of the finest looking women in the world have had that robe on. these again. It cost about five times that much brand new. I know who made it. 
And I know the kind of care that they put in it. And sure, he's worn it, but he's worn it to beat up some of the top names in the business. So we want to start out at $1,000 and come on, don't make us look bad in front of the champ. Texas, this would make you a nice tent. You can live in this for a week. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Come on. Oh, good heart can't go that far. <laughs> Come on. Well, I guess the same thing with the boots. The thing costs a lot more than the minimum bid just to have it made to begin with if you went out and had somebody off the street do it. That's, and that's right, by the way, this is the Big Apple, New York City. One of them sold in Charlotte for $8,000. North Carolina, civilization, my hometown. Yeah, that's, that's right, I'll, I'll turn heel and heart be here. Now, you're going to make New York look bad? The Big Apple's got a worm in it or what? Come on, you should be ashamed. Hey, listen to him. This, this, this guy bought a daggum pink tuxedo and a pair of pink boots. And, and he didn't even try to sell it to Rip Rogers first. <laughs> so come on, anybody going to start this out? Thousand bucks. Yeah. 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 I get a picture with Flair with it. Yeah. Okay. A picture with Flair with the robe and a thousand dollars. That's yeah. what he's been right there. You will get a picture with Rick with the robe. One thousand dollars. And Rick will present it to you and you get a picture. You get some VCR tape, you get footprints in the sand, anything you want. I don't care. A thousand dollars. Anybody else? Come on. Don't let him get it without a fight. Electra and Ric Flair will present it to you. Heck, we, if, is Frank Chili still here? We can even get Frank to come up here. What do you say? Who's looking? Oh, my man. Don't let me down. $1,100! Yeah! Are you married? You weren't until yesterday. Well, no, it would have been over anyway. Believe me, she's telling the truth. This is the piece right here. Don't act like that now. $1,100. <laughs> what, what, would you be willing to go higher? Wait a minute, John, John, let's do, wait a minute, let's try something here. Wait a minute, Tim, hold on. He'd go higher, but he ain't got it on him. What can we do? Can't do it? Can't do it. You got, you got anything of value? Have you got a car? <laughs> Wait a minute, New York City, what am I talking about? He's probably only got a couple of hubcaps left out of the whole thing. $1,100. Come on, guys. Huh? $1,200. Bless you. $1,200. Hey, here you go. Here's the dagger rope right here on the WCW trading card. WCW did something right for once. $1,200. What do you think? This is history, brother. Thirteen hundred dollars. Oh! Are we cooking now or what? Fourteen. Fourteen hundred dollars. Fifteen. Sixteen. Sixteen hundred. Come on. What do you, he said sixteen. What do you say? He's thinking. 
like me. I'm Cactus. Big money man like you? But I've got folks. Yeah. I already got folks, huh? Yeah, it's serious. It costs you 225 to buy brand new. Well, they paid us 20 bucks to run the bid up.